Let's go, folks. <laughs> Welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. I'm Nate, uh, Brian, Aaron Weber. Thank you uh, to Viore for sponsoring this episode of Nate Land. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at viore.com slash Nate. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but you will enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75. Also, did you know two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they are 35 years old? Is that when it happened? What time? What? 35. That's Keeps pretty accurate. Offers a simple stress-free way to take to keep your hair with treatments starting at just $10 per month. If you are ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps k e e p s dot com slash nate to receive your first month of treatment for free. That K that's K E E P S dot com slash Nate to get your first month free. Keeps dot com slash Nate. Uh welcome everybody to the podcast. Uh I started with the let's go. I don't know if that's gonna be the uh I mean, truthfully, all that all this being said, I I do think I get to decide what I want to say. <laughs> I mean, because, that is true. So yeah. <laughs> uh I enjoy talking about it and uh being in the mix. But how did it feel just now? Let's go, good? folks. Felt good. I, it feels great. I like it. Uh, I like it. I like the specific. It's uh, we well, we did it. You threw a poll up on the Instagram and Twitter uh, and Twitter. And so what? What, what were the, the to let's go and hello, folks? Here's the Instagram results. Fourteen hundred <clears throat> people. Uh, oh, I mean, over two thousand people voted. Sixty-two percent hello, folks. Thirty-eight percent let's go, folks. What I would say is a lot of this is uh, it's people that don't want change. Yeah. And that's, uh, yeah. you know, uh, Laura, you know who over here? People that are is stuck in their ways. All three of our wives voted for Hello Folks. Oh, did they really? Yeah. Yeah. Did they listen to it? That's the thing, too. Did people listen to the... And hear the explanation yeah. and hear yeah, the context yeah. for yeah. it? Yeah. And everything. I don't know if Laura did. Yeah. Laura doesn't. Uh, here's the Twitter. Hello, folks. Same thing. Uh, everybody still likes hello, folks, because we've been doing hello, folks. Hello, folks. Uh, I'm not saying I'm against. I like hello, folks. I think let's go, folks, is just stands out more. Yeah, I think that's it's different. Hello, folks, is weird. Just saying the same greeting that's been said for 100 years. Yeah. Right, you think? Well, a lot of it is in the the inflection that you do it. Yeah. I think that is unique in a way. Let's I mean, go, how many people, folks. Well, well, the even oh, the hello, hello folks. Hello, how folks. Many people go, hello, folks. Yeah, I mean, who talks like that? Yeah, yeah. I'm not changing the folks. <laughs> I know it's the you like hello. I like uh, look. I like let's go, folks. Uh, but I, I wouldn't be upset either way. I think they're both. I think they're both good. I yeah. hear it a lot now in the yeah. wild and people you, are using it and it's cool yeah 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 but they're using it but you're that's that's almost kind of the thing you hear it a lot you just notice it more that's uh people always people said that with one fell swoop when i did the one fell swoop joke mm -hmm. and i've noticed it too once i started doing the one fell swoop joke i heard a lot more people use one fell swoop yeah and so it's like that kind of thing when you say hello folks and we say it here you start hearing other people say it mm -hmm. but they're not saying it because they're they're one of us no, I'm saying fans, fans of the podcast yeah, oh, that I meet are yes. using it. So I, I like it either way. I just No, no, I know that. No, I know the fans are using it, but I'm saying that you notice it. I notice it like just in on oh, TV yeah. and oh, yeah. like you see, you just hear someone say it somewhere and you can tell that it's, you know, like let's go folks is way more specific and nobody's saying that. Mm -hmm. Everybody's saying hello folks, right? Based on the comments I read, there was a few that said they're after you railed on "Let's Go" for a few weeks. <laughs> they just don't like the about face. But that's the joke. Yeah, I know that's the comedy it, of it. Ironically, yeah. Some of them said they just don't like "Let's Go" so much they just can't even say it ironically. I don't either, and that's why we're making fun of them. Is for saying "Let's Go, folks." We are. It's you know, it's like uh, you watch UFC fight. You ever watch fighting? UFC fighting. If a guy gets in trouble, he doesn't go away. He gets closer. <laughs> That's what this is. If you you go get closer to the, like if you watch a guy 
and he gets he gets rocked and he's got to get it back together a little bit. Yeah. It's something you've learned in fighting. If if someone's going to fight you, run at him. Yeah. Like they 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 say that with a gun. If someone's going to shoot a gun with you, go to the guy. If it's a knife, run. Yeah. But so it's it's almost like we're going. We don't like let's go so much. We're going. At, we're going. We're getting You're up giving in it a it. hug and locking. We're getting. Up we're it. locking it up. We're getting uh-huh. up in. All right, I'm sold. That's that's I'm we're sold. in con- we're in control of the let's go, mm-hmm. and we take it over. Yeah, and then we make it our own thing. We control the narrative. We're like, uh, we control the uh, narrative of let's go. Yeah, and every time someone says let's go, we enjoy it more because we go, folks. Yeah, that's what I think afterwards. Yeah. When I see someone, every, I see you see it, and this weekend watching. Golf was great this weekend. They had eight playoffs holes, I believe. Unbelievable. And uh, you see, he's, I saw a guy in the crowd just scream, let's go, like he's, you know, like the lunatics. And I thought of folks, and I didn't, I wasn't angry at that guy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I was like, Oh, I get eh, that for sure. All right. I thought of my own thing. It's not, <laughs> look, it's not for sure yet. I, we're going to do, we're doing another, uh, we can do another poll, but I want we're 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 gonna we're not doing it now. Yeah. Okay. Give it. Let us breathe. We'll keep doing polls till we get the results we want. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We'll, yeah. Do, we'll do another one. So how long do you guys want this to go on? <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, we, but I we we're do it again. But we we I want it to be a little. It needs it. Let's let everybody. I want you to think in your soul mm-hmm. about this. Yeah. Get into it. I might switch. Let me think about it a little more. Maybe maybe it's hello, folks. Maybe I just want it to be back, hello, folks. Yeah. Can we have both? Huh? Can we do both? We can't. Yeah. You can do everybody can do whatever you want. But I don't know what the point of uh, it's the int- if it's the intro to the podcast. I'm not going to go hello, folks. Let's go, folks. Like you're getting nowhere. Yeah. That's how someone gets where they don't. They go nowhere in life. Is they go, let's just do both. <laughs> that turned quickly. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. You don't make a decision. You don't make a decision. You don't move forward. You kind of sit in the decision of two things. Is that not true? <laughs> yeah, that got way more serious than I was anticipating. You pivoted that into like real life advice. That's, you know? that is, but I'm, but that's, uh, that's why you can't just sit and do. I mean, I don't know. That's the, you wanted. You asked if we could do two. I'm telling you the reason why. I know, but we just did a poll. We're overwhelmingly. Then he was like, "Let's just let it sit for a while." <laughs> you did a poll. <clears throat> was the episode even up? I put that out. I think three days later. I mean, it's people listen to this podcast like like on way. We're acting like we're a live, like it's we're on a live show, and like we, you know. It's it comes out. People listen to it. People are gonna think about it. I'm letting people think. Yeah, we're making a decision. We'll come back. I'm on board with let's go, folks. But I hope the next poll is like ninety percent hello, folks. <laughs> if they send it, I, just, just as hope an answer. It's gone the other don't way. don't just do that just to make a point. <laughs> That's it, true. That's if true. that happens, I'm gonna make sure. Answer gonna, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> answer I'm gonna make. We're gonna do another poll if that happens. <laughs> if I see ninety percent. You better bet we're doing another poll. Just threatening them with polls. We'll do so many polls, dude. Guys, I'll do this poll podcast would be about polls. <laughs> but you've already said you hate and don't trust. I, I don't trust them. <laughs> I, I, there's, look, this I contradict myself a lot, and that's what it is. There was a, <clears throat> more than one pastor have already said they accepted the challenge and did it. One posted a video, if I'm saying it. Let's go, folks. Yeah. I saw that, yeah. yeah that On the Nate funny. Land, if you look at Nate Land, uh, the Instagram. Mm-hmm. Uh, he started off with "Let's go, folks." He did it good. He raised his energy up, mm-hmm. and it felt good. Mm-hmm. But you know what I mean? That's what I mean. I think the "Hello, folks" was easy. "Let's go." He had to do something. Yeah, he had to get it in there. And his church was clearly a type of church, community church. He needs kind of a very old conservative church like mine. And try <laughs> oh, "Let's go, folks." People would walk out. Yeah. Uh, What's going on? Yeah, they would be fine with "Hello, folks." That's <laughs> yeah. how they talk. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're trying to get younger on this podcast. <laughs> they would no. literally look, get up and go. Yeah, they wouldn't like it. Uh, yeah, we can look. We're we're. It's, it's, I, I want a fair. All I'm asking for is everybody be fair. How does this thing? Uh, every I want everybody to just think about it, and then uh, you know, I always too. It made me think. I, I know I fidget with this a lot. People always bring that up. 
I bet I bet you would fidget too if you were I know. sitting here. It's like there's It's so hard not to. Yeah. I always want to. It's kind of fun. Grip the bottom of it. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> he was in work here. Yeah, who is this guy? It's a loose. Getting worse. <laughs> Let's go, folks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Microphone's fixed. Uh, but I do get fidgety with it. Also, uh, let's read these comments. And we're, we're, we can talk about some other stuff. Uh, uh, David Womack. I started a new job this past week, and I have my own office. I'm quite introverted and struggled. I always have trouble spelling quite. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just had it this weekend. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I'm quite introverted and struggle to meet new people. I was listening to you guys on my lunch break and a guy across the hall heard you and hollered, hello, folks. Anyways, we're now best friends. Thanks for breaking the ice and helping me make a new office buddy. David, the fact that he's going to hear that you wrote that and probably bell on you. Uh, no, that would be funny. He goes, David, I heard uh, Nate talk about I, I was just saying hello to him. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Bringing people together. Yeah. yeah. Two guys. If they, if they listen to this, they're, they're going to get along. I'd like them to vote on the hello, let's yeah, go. Yeah, they're folks. debating it right now at work. What if they break up as being <laughs> friends because one's so bored of the leg? Let's go, folks. And the other one goes, hello, folks, is how I even, how we met. <laughs> he just, hello, folks, is everything. Mm. Jen Stevens, let's go, folks. It's it's like our secret handshake. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's a uh, it's it only us know this. Uh huh. It's so specific. That's the thing that kind of makes me go. It's so specific. Mm -hmm. No one knows. You know, let's go. It's just it's ridiculous. Yeah, that's the joke. We're in on the joke. We're so much smarter than all the let's go folks. Chase Whitney, hello, folks. Sound much more. Greatest average American. Let's go, folks. Feels a little like we're trying to ride a bandwagon. Because you're looking at it the wrong way. Chase. <laughs> uh, if you're, if I don't, you, you got to get it. It's not the, I get like we're doing a very saying that's very famous right now. Yeah. But it's, it's, we're, we're making a new one up. Hello, folks is not, everybody talks like that. Mm-hmm. Let's go, folks, is we're making fun of them, and it's new, and no one says, let's go, folks. Yeah. Nobody says that. It's a juxtaposition of let's go, the way younger people talk, folks, and the way older people talk, which is a big theme in your comedy, Nate, is being in between generations. Yeah. Right? Yep. Look at that. That was a big one. <laughs> Ty Burham. Hello, friends. That's what we say over at Aaronland. <laughs> so, hello, friends, is uh, Jim Nance. Doesn't he say that? Uh with golf, oh, is that I, I believe someone else says hello, friend. Yeah, hello, you're friend. Right. I think is Jim it... Nance says hello, <clears throat> friend. Again, that's along with uh, like it's his famous thing is hello, friend. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Aaron Land would seem like a place where y'all <laughs> would steal someone else's stuff. Uh, James Lackey, I have seen every episode. I watch every stand-up special on Netflix from every comedian. Wow. The closest I ever came to blacking out from laughing is when Brian says, Kent State Massacre. <laughs> After talking about Vietnam, and Nate says, good night nonstop. <laughs> the funny thing about that, I rewatched the clip. <laughs> I wasn't planning on whispering massacre, like, get us it. But I said, Kent State, just Kent State, and you go, good night. And then I'd lost all confidence in itself it's like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you said it so faintly dude it was, i watched that clip probably 20 30 times dude. who it's needed it to hear funny. needed to hear it. <laughs> it's a good way to put it's it how you talk about uh you talk about stuff with your kid in the room you know and you go, <laughs> yeah. kevin gory butch allman nate has gone from inventing words to inventing humans watch out folks I guess it's Butch Trucks. Butch Trucks. Yeah. He was in the Almond Brothers. All right. Uh, yeah. It's Butch Trucks. That's, was, uh, that's Derek's uncle, right? Yep. Uh, I was wrong. <laughs> Nick Buback. Nate with It's Weird That Usain Bolt Isn't There. Talking about the U.S. Olympic Trials. 
Usain Bolt, the famous Jamaican sprinter. <laughs> uh, I guess I meant, yeah, it was the U.S. Trout. He should be in it. I'll be honest with you. They, why would they not? He should just be around at all the trials. He almost feels like an American, doesn't he? Yeah. Because he's so popular. And- yeah. Let him come. <laughs> Don't you want to see what he would do? I would like to see what he would yeah. do. Yeah. Well, give us what we want. <laughs> Have him in there. <laughs> Greg Luganis should go do. We should send Greg Luganis over there. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody from my generation. Yeah. That's our guy. Send him to Jamaica. We give you same bolt. <laughs> Rusty Green. This is, I think I know Rusty. Uh, 1985 during Live Aid, Phil Collins played the London show. After his set, he flew on the Concord to Philadelphia and played that concert as well, making him the only artist to play both shows on the same day. That's uh, crazy. Yeah. From London. Yeah. Flew on the Concord. Which Never. some people pointed out the reason it was discontinued. Some pretty major plane crashes. <laughs> Oh, man. Concord. 50% yeah. chance. That's how that was their motto. 50%. <laughs> but you'll get there. That's the better. Motto. That's their motto. I know it's only 50%, but always remember that's better than 60%. Uh, there you go. 50% chance you get in the wreck. We could be 60%. And they go, that's true. And you go, all right, I'll do it. Mm-hmm. That's how they would get you into doing it. 50 50, this plane goes down. Nicholas Wincoop. If Aaron's dream is to be the reaction guy on the bench and warm ups, then he's literally living his dream right now. <laughs> yep. Is that you said you that, get it. That's my role. You said that last week, right? That would be your when we're talking about basketball, the guy who oh, holds that's everybody who I back. I would be, yeah, the guy holding everybody back yeah. on the bench. The bench reaction. Yeah. I'm holding all the, the, the crew. I hold them back when we laugh. Yeah. From getting. Uh, you let them loose a little bit. Uh, I'd be appreciated. Uh, Tyler Gamil or Gamil. While the Disco Demolition Night promotion was a complete disaster, the worst promotion night ever has to go to the Cleveland Indians where they put on 10 cent beer night in 1974. <laughs> Fans were getting so drunk and rowdy that they eventually overran the stand serving beer and started carving or carving, started carrying full kegs back into the bleachers. Later in the game, one fan ran on the field and got into an altercation with an outfitter from the visiting Rangers team. When his teammates came to his aid, hundreds of fans stormed the field and a giant brawl erupted on the field. It got so bad that Cleveland's manager, fearing for the safety of the Rangers players, sent his own players into the action armed with bats to protect Rangers players from their own fans. That that does sound bad. I look, that could be worse. Yeah, I looked this up. There's some photos. Uh, I think it was Mike Hargrove, who was longtime manager, who was the player, and he got into an altercation with the fans, and Billy Martin was the yeah. manager, and they ran out there with bats, and then the fans swarmed the field, and then the Indians ran out there with their own bats to defend the Rangers. Ten cent beer night. I mean, a dollar gets you annihilated. <laughs> a dollar. Yeah. Look at that one picture of the guy on the ground there. <laughs> I mean, mm. they're just... That's a fan. Just chaos. <laughs> I mean, just so, and people drink before they get there. Yeah. So that's you so. You pregame 10 set beer night? I think so. I mean, I'm sure <laughs> you, you know what's happening. And like, they're, I mean, I'll be honest, in 1974, I mean, were they 30 cents full price? Uh, but they're, they were, uh, I, I like, uh, it's like, the, I love the mindset of just going, it's 10 cent beer night. We're doing something great for you guys. And everybody goes, yeah, dude, I, we appreciate that. <laughs> we'll go bring our family and stuff and uh, have some beers. And just to then a guy with a keg next to him and just looking out at the outfielder going, is that guy looking at us? Like he <laughs> takes it personal and he's got his beer and he's on his, I mean, he maybe brought $2 and now that's his 20th beer. And, I mean, you know, the logic behind going to get the keg to go, why, dude, I'm not, 10 cents is, if for 10 cents, just let me bring a keg out. I'll give you $40 and I should get the whole keg. I think a keg is 173 beers. So how much is that? So it's $17 and 30 cents. No. Right? No, I think it's $1,700. 
No. <laughs> uh, it's not. I think it's 170. I would bet. I mean, yeah, seventeen dollars and thirty cents. So you just give <clears> for a, a keg. Yeah, if it's if you're doing ten cents a beer. Keep give me give me the keg. Keep the twenty. <laughs> yeah, keep the change. Keep on the, the change. There was one player who was. They're only making seventeen dollars on the keg. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they're making money on beer at all that night. No, let's but, try uh, to get fans yeah. and stand. What is ten per, Yeah, ten percent of seven. Yeah, <laughs> that seems so. It seems so cheap that it seems wrong. Yeah, yeah. I guess we'll find out next week. There's one player that <laughs> yes, exactly. We're gonna wait a week to find yeah. out. <laughs> there was one player who was involved in this game and the disco demolition night he was in both of them oh i guess you write a book yeah first half this second half that <laughs> some of these bars I've been, some bars will do like dollar pitcher night it's yeah just, you just crazy yeah it's crazy how cheap these places yeah. will give it sometimes uh yeah thanks for that comment <laughs> uh it's your college days right good night <laughs> good night that was worth a good night right there <laughs> Bringing something to the table. Let's go. Yeah, you know, let's folks. go. Folks. Good night, folks. I mean, <sighs> try to put a button on that segment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Let's yeah. On to the next it. comment. I think it was. There was a button already, and you undid it. And now we <laughs> lost the button. That's what you did with that comment. You know, uh, sometimes uh, cups are a little bit cheaper for, and they have to raise it. I went to a place the other day, they charged it for Diet Cokes. <laughs> Uh, I did go to a place, uh, a restaurant that was a great restaurant, and they charged you for every diet coke, and that makes me furious. <laughs> did you not find out till you got the receipt at the end? Or? <laughs> yeah, twenty two days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, uh, you don't find out. Sometimes they come up and say, "Yeah, hey, it's insane." Mm-hmm. McDonald's ain't charging for every diet coke. No. Don't you're if you're going to a nice, it's like a steakhouse, and you charge. Look, if it comes in the bo- the bottles, you are that's obvious. Different. That's, that's different. different. Yeah. But if it's if it's if you're bringing it to me in a drink, you can't you can't. Mm-hmm. We we got in a, a one when we were first married, Big J's birthday party. We go to this restaurant called I I, I want to say it was called Ninja in New York, and uh, this is uh, we we have no money. Uh, you know this is whenever fifteen years ago or something, and so we go eat. Laura's the only one working. And uh, we go to this restaurant. It's like the first time really going to like a super, super nice New York expensive restaurant where where your bill is going to, you know, we got a large table of people where, I mean, I think it might be like a couple hundred bucks a person. or You know, like it might be a thousand dollars for like a group of 10 people. You know, something where you're like, dude, we've never done. I don't know. We don't know what this is. Uh, we went to Sparks once to get off the, the first time we ever went to spend a lot of money on food. We went, this is how Southern and basically redneck we are. We go to Sparks, which is the famous New York uh, steak restaurant where the mafia guy got shot. In Paul front Castellano. Of. Yeah. He got, he, they killed him right in front of the restaurant. Uh, you ever hear that? No. Yeah. It was a big, uh, they think Gotti did John it. Gotti. Yeah. John Gotti. He did became it. the new boss. He- yeah. Kill the guy. It's like the 80s, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it was, you know, uh, and they got him right outside. And so we went there and ate, and uh, that dying. And they, no, <laughs> they, no, we, uh, we went in there and ate, and it's like a big, famous, it's a great steakhouse. Yeah. And so I remember the check being like $200 or something. We took a picture of it because we just never, I mean, we, we couldn't believe ever go, like, what do you mean? Yeah, this is insane. This is insane. Yeah. $200 for food? Right. Like, that's crazy. And we remember, we took a picture of it and just like, we're just a bunch of <laughs> dumb rednecks. Uh, but they, uh, so the ninja thing, so they come over and they bring, all we were drinking Diet Coke. This was forever ago. And I mean, it's, it's like $30 worth of Diet Coke. And we were like, Laura was livid. I was too. Like, it's just crazy to be like, tell us. Like, come up and say, yo, man, we're charging you mm-hmm. for Diet Coke. So you went to a really nice restaurant and ordered Diet Coke? Yeah. I drink Diet Coke everywhere. But I thought those were your drinking days, so you would have probably gotten a uh, glass of wine or something. He had just done I don't think we, beer night. I, don't, so I think we were already on edge with how much this was going to cost. This was before Sparks, and so we were worried – too, like let's try not to go crazy yeah right uh, i'll just get a bottomless diet coke yeah and just yeah, yeah. And we were not trying to spend too much and then uh and it's one like new york is very big it's jay's birthday now we're all gonna pay for it and we all everybody it was like everybody's pitching in and uh, that's also new york too they do that with uh i remember a girl i worked in chicago 
uh, Kristen, and she uh, had she was from New York. She had to go to a uh, wedding, and she was the bridesmaid. I remember she had to buy him a gift, and she was like saving a. She was like working, taking extra shifts because she's like, I got to give him a gift. It's gonna be like five hundred bucks, and I was like, What? <laughs> you got to give someone a gift worth five hundred dollars, like for a wedding, like mm-hmm. that. You're not your. It's not your daughter getting married. You know, it's. Yeah. Uh, you're just a guest at the wedding, yeah. and they were like, "That's what they that's what they do in New York." Which I I kind of like it. New York is like it's very much, it's very sweet. It's very nice. You you're really giving them a gift. But that's kind of the expected n- number. I, I, I mean, I think they spend a lot. It's wow. not like in South. You're, it's it's you don't give giant gifts. I mean, I think you could give. I think a hundred dollars would even be a lot for yeah. a lot of like you wouldn't even give that. But it's. You know, I mean, where you are and stuff like, yeah, obviously the grandparents, they probably do a little more and stuff like that. But a friend, a friend, I don't think you would ever yeah. expect someone to get. I remember I was like, golly, that's kind of crazy. Yeah. You got to, you know, they got to buy the dress. They got to so cost this person $1,500 mm-hmm. to go to your wedding. Just one person. I don't know. I got him a plunger for his wedding. You did, man. That really <laughs> made me laugh. He got me a plunger. Oh, yeah. For a, a really nice plunger, I don't know, I don't know what it's special about it, but it looks really nice. It was on your registry. Yeah, okay, yeah. And <laughs> yeah. then the the description, I opened it up. Like, who got us the plunger? It was from Brian, and it said, <laughs> "I want you to think of me every time you use this." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it just that was really funny. Yeah, man. yeah. Opposite. <laughs> The opposite of the really opposite nice five hundred dollars. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that was, it's uh, a really nice plunger, though. It's uh you just spent more money at 10 cent beer night. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. I, I, for many years, the single guy would get 20, $25 gift as a wedding. And then, yeah, but I think that's what you... But I didn't progress over time. Yeah. I mean, I was doing that up till two years ago. And then my yeah. wife's like, we got to up it a little bit. You got to give them a little bit more than that. Somebody sent us and it wasn't, it wasn't labeled. And it was this kit where of, of, a uh, to like where, my wife and I are supposed to like body paint all over it. Oh God! It's the weirdest thing we've. I was. I was so was from Nate. Well, dude, it, it, I mean, I read this. How it had this guide of what to do. Like you cover yourself in paint, and then the two of you together paint on this canvas. <coughs> and we were. This is the weirdest thing ever. And we found out it was a comic that oh, sent it to us as a joke. Funny. Yeah. But but reading through it, we were like, yeah. this is who would send us. This. Was it hard to do though? <laughs> <laughs> that's how you button some up uh <laughs> becky hurley the reason it seems unbelievable that ronaldo was able to tank coke's stock by four billion is because well it is unbelievable this is a situation where people took correlation to equal causation and ran with it all right i like becky's i i, I, I like becky's response to that. i like someone that comes in and goes eh Probably not true. I looked it up, and uh, stock market was just way down that day across the board. So when he had his press conference that morning, it was already Coke was already down four billion dollars yeah. when he oh. did that. Mm-hmm. So, and by the end of the day, I think Coke was actually up from the previous day. It just happened to be at the same time, but it already. That's dropped. crazy how big Coke is. That just like four billion dollars is just now. It's just a bad day that day. Someone yeah. I was just talking about that, but some of their stocks with oil and stuff, their like their company will be worth two billion to thirty billion, and it's all like in a week. It's all make believe though. Yeah, that's what I'm starting <laughs> to think. I don't, you know, where's all this money? <laughs> I don't. I'm, I'm, the older I'm getting, the more I'm like so confused with going. I think there's something you're like. How does everybody have money now? It seems like everybody has money. Like everybody, you can't all the you can't be doing building a pool construction. Yeah. No one, there's no lumber, there's no anything. Everybody's got money. Like we went through a pandemic, and everybody's just richer now because of it. Mm-hmm. Like a lot uh, of people are. Yeah. 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 I'm not saying everybody, right. but it's right. it's just seems crazy to me. Like everybody's like just doing better. I. It's all. It's where where is it? And all the money's like. There's no concrete money. It's all just kind of like, you know, who they have four billion in the worth, nine billion in the worth. Four, like, what is that even? It's just, what's all just like yeah. moving around? Yeah. I don't believe any of it. Uh, what is the stock market? <laughs> Curare uh, Curare fan. Curare fan. C U R A R E fan. 
Wrong description of rope-a-dope. More commonly, Ali would be against the ropes, away from the corner, and cover his head while his opponent would be punching him out till he got tired. Then Ali would make his comeback after conserving his energy. Still pretty wild strategy, though. I looked up that video last week. That wasn't even <laughs> the right video. Yeah. <laughs> that video is pretty amazing, though. If you kept watching, yeah. he does, he like boops the guy on the head yeah. and just totally messes with him. But that yeah. wasn't George Foreman. Yeah, that was. Uh, or, or a rope a dope. So no. it was just nothing. That was like a no, that was like a known nobody boxer or mm-hmm. something. Like, you know, a guy that's great, obviously, mm-hmm. but not. Mm-hmm. He ain't doing that, George Foreman. Uh, B. Andrew Scott. If the band says their name is just Eagles and you don't have to add the to the front of a sentence, you wouldn't say the, the Metallica is a legendary band or the Duran Duran were great in the 80s. So you could say Nate performed for a member of Eagles. All right. All right. That makes sense. But at the same time, you wouldn't say uh, what time does titans play today <laughs> they're going yeah. up against jaguars <laughs> yeah does it have something to do with being plural i wouldn't be friends with that person <laughs> if someone said hey what time the titans what time the titans play today i'd be like you gotta get up to leave this house right now and he goes why dude he goes we're about to get started let's go, and you go dude get out of here right now are you kidding mm. me <laughs> can i have a coke or no can i have coke and he can't even say the I go, you know, Coke. Never says the. He never says the. You know, Coke uh, stock went down. I don't know if that. I'm trying to think of the. Maybe I don't say the that much either. Honestly, I might be talking to myself and I'm going to have to ask myself to leave. (laughs) Aaron, does that have something to do with it being plural? Or I feel like, yeah, I feel like that does play play a role in it. I don't know. There you go. (laughs) Uh, I learned the hard way not to try to not to try to add a little thought there at the end. So yeah, I'll just, no, I'd I'll love just you tap to add, out of that one. I, look, I'd love you to add a thought, just if it could be good. Uh, well, that's a lot to ask. It's going to be a while. It's going to be a while. We're working up to that. Yeah. We're having a new poll. Uh, let's go, pals. <laughs> we just, and I'm like, now let me tell you something. I know y'all are going to sit here and – I'm trying to separate even us, the folks of this. Like, <laughs> I'm going to get my own group. I'm <laughs> getting down to just me and the guy that runs Aaronland, <laughs> And we take off and do our own thing. <laughs> Matt Conrad. Ken Griffey Sr. was supposed to be on the Marshall plane that crashed. However, he got his girlfriend pregnant the year before with Ken Griffey Jr. and decided he needed money, so he signed a minor league contract instead of staying on the Marshall football team. Wow. That's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah, I don't think did we he, talk about too. Uh, did we say Wahlberg was on that 9 11? Someone texted me that. Did we talk about this? I don't know. I don't, think I don't so. know what you're talking about. I don't either. <laughs> talking about plane crash. Oh, like someone. Oh, maybe that because they're talking about plane crashes going down. Like King Griffin Sr. is supposed to be on it. Yeah. Like, you know, that's the 9 11. Mark Wahlberg was supposed to be on that flight. So the Seth MacFarlane, I think. I didn't know that. He was that. supposed to be on the, uh, on the flights. Yeah. I don't think King Griffey Sr. actually signed with Marshall, but I think he was about to. And then he got a minor league contract and he needed yeah. the money. But he would have been on the team the year that happened. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So the lesson there is don't go to college. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When did we talk? What did we talk about with that? The, the 70s, the plane yeah. crashes, Marshall yeah, yeah. and Wichita State. We talked about my brother too and his. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Uh, I don't remember anything. Viore, something I do remember, is a new outlook on performance apparel. Perfect if you're sick and tired of traditional old workout gear. Everything is designed to work out in, but does not look or feel like it's just workout clothes, which I love. It's very comfortable. You can wear it all the time. I wear it all the time. That is what's great with, you know, people are wearing workout clothes kind of everywhere now. And uh, so they need to look nice. And so you don't look like a bum when you go out. And that's what Viore does. I have the Sunday performance joggers. They are super comfortable. Uh, Aaron's wife has the women's daily leggings and she loves them. Uh, right, she told me. Yeah. I ask her pretty regularly. Uh, <laughs> the body paint thing, uh, and she said she wore them during it. And I was like, Oh, that's cool. Uh, I'm glad, glad you guys like the gift. Ordering online is very easy, and the website is not cluttered. Very easy to pick styles and color options, and everything has a great fit to it. Do yourself a favor and get your own Viore. Uh, Viore is an investment in your happy meals for our listeners. 
They are offering 20% off your first purchase. So get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at viori.com slash Nate. That is V-U-O-R-I dot com slash Nate. They have a lot of golf stuff too. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders, over $75 in free returns. Go to viori.com slash Nate and discover Viori clothing like we did. Also, guys, give keeps a try. I think it... uh it's easy to do. You don't have to go out to the doctor. You can get a prescription medication delivered to your home, and it's very affordable. If you notice thin hair, this is the time to try Keeps. So if you're starting to thin now, if you're looking at yourself, and you got to be honest with yourself and look at in the mirror and go, you know what? I can see a little bit going. You don't want to wait too long. <laughs> right next to us. <laughs> you, you, you sit there and you go, wow, it's starting to go a little bit. This is the time to do keeps. Did you know that more than 50 million in the U.S. suffer from male pattern baldness? 50 million. Keeps offers a simple stress-free way to keep your hair. There are only two FDA-approved medications that can prevent hair loss, and Keeps offers both of them. They have, virtu- they have uh, virtual doctor consultants and medication delivered straight to your door every three months so you don't have to leave your home. The treatment starts at only $10 per month and Keeps offers uh keeps offers generic versions as well discreet packaging uh so it's not like seinfeld because it has to put a big thing keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors prevention is key treatments can take four to six months to see results so act fast this is keeps is a thing for you if you if you're noticing it that it's starting to go this is the time to try keeps if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Nate to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Nate to get your first month free. Keeps dot com slash Nate. Uh, all right, everybody. Uh, we also wanted to give a shout out to uh, uh, Frank Turner. He sent us a book, uh, uh, Pla- a Plato and a Platypus, Walk Into a Bar, Understanding Philosophy, through jokes you know this book that's a great book i've had that book for a while yeah they kind of go through all the different types of philosophy and explain it with uh one-liner jokes and yeah it's yeah. really cool that's fun yeah. yeah yeah do some reading uh to go let me see. so <laughs> what go, you know, sh- do some reading yeah you shove it to the end <laughs> of just go oh that's wonderful get rid of this got that pin <laughs> uh no, I no, I, I I will be reading. I don't need the pen. Uh, you had to get it. Well, I had already, I had already gone all the way over. Already there. made yeah. the move. There, uh, body no, no, stays I in will motion. read it. Uh, I'll read it. I like the idea of that. It's fun. Yeah, the learning through that. So we have a uh, uh, one thing Vanderbilt's playing. If you're, I mean, we're watching this Wednesday, so hopefully they're, hopefully it's over. Maybe they're not playing. They just swept. Uh, we will be finding out. I'll be watching it tonight. We're, you know, this being Monday. And, uh, you know, Vanderbilt uh, got in to the in, people that don't know College World Series. Vanderbilt got into it. They were supposed to play NC State in an elimination game. NC State uh, had players that get COVID. And so they had to uh, cancel. Or they, I mean, they did no contest. Yeah. So they're not letting them play, which is terrible. No one wants that, dude. Vanderbilt doesn't want that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no one's on board with that. It's insane. I don't. They shouldn't even be testing these kids. It's 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 unreal. I mean, just you can't let you letting all these fans go in yeah. and watch games. It doesn't matter. It's like let the kids play. No one's. But there was a lot of like crazy stuff. People started attacking Vanderbilt. Like like we had something to do with it. You're like Vanderbilt had nothing to do with it. Yeah. I was just watching like a guy on their news. He's a guy in North Carolina, like their news uh, was like, I don't know. Well, why don't they go test Vanderbilt then and all this stuff? And I mean, I'm sure they, they did. did. They did, yeah. And then uh, you just like someone that you go like, all right, dude, don't bring – like you think it's us? You think it's Vanderbilt doing that? I would be upset, but it's not like I'm going to be like, well, Vanderbilt should be kicked out too. Like that doesn't make sense. Uh-huh. That's their logic. How about you go get mad at the NCAA? We will support you. Mm-hmm. We will be on board with that. But don't start attacking Vanderbilt. Because now I'm you starting to make me happy. Well, as a Vandy fan, it made me mad. I see some non-Vandy fans post, congratulations, Vandy, on your next national championship. 
they're saying that like because uh you know because we got to rest pitcher for yeah. an extra day yeah it's a no win situation if Vanderbilt wins they're gonna, well of course they got a, a big advantage and if if we lose then they're gonna be it's gonna they're like can you believe that yeah we'll go win mm-hmm. and then let it let it be known we did get that extra day of rest what do you want us to do and then we prepared it's not like Vanderbilt's garbage mm-hmm. it's not like we're lucky to be there yeah we're dominant <laughs> we we haven't played great good. But we, what we did in the Stanford game was unbelievable, and uh, and so we're we're awesome, dude. They they one funny thing was like I saw an interview, and I don't know when it was with that coach, the NC, the NC State coach, and I like that coach. But he, when he said something, he goes, I don't know what's going on. There's a bug running through our team. <laughs> and you're like, I don't know. Maybe don't say that. <laughs> like, I don't know what that was. That's all I thought. I was like, I don't, <laughs> just don't mention that. I don't know, dude. We ate some, everybody ate food last night. No one could taste it. I don't know. We're having a weird <laughs> tournament. Anyways, next question. And then you get tested. And they're like, well, we got to test you now. And you're like, well, you don't, yeah, don't say there's some kind of cold running through your uh-huh. team during a global pandemic. Just kind of keep your mouth shut and yeah. say they're injured. I mean, maybe they can't say it. Yeah. I don't know. But that was very funny. I'd be like, I'd be like uh, yeah, dude, cut it. Don't mention, yeah. say they all tore their ACLs. That would be better than, you know, than saying we got a cold. Doesn't know about COVID. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm got a bug. You got some bug running through us, you know? Uh, anyway, so, uh, and you guys had a, a good weekend, right? Uh, yeah. We did, you did uh, Chicago Zanies. Chicago Zanies all weekend. Four sold out shows. Yeah. Obviously sold That's out great. weekend. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot great. Of, a lot of folks came out. Yeah. That's yeah. really cool. And we were talking earlier, you know, when you're like meeting people after the show and you're just shaking people's hands and, and uh, the podcast fans would go, uh, Hello, folk. They just try to. So they, they you're talking about it being a secret handshake. Like that's what it yeah. was. Like, yes. They just kind of throw it in there. Yeah. So I knew. Uh, yeah. So that was really cool. Thank you to everybody that came out. Yeah, that's that. awesome. See, yeah. I think the "Let's Go, folks" too gives them more energy. Let's go, folks. Like it, it starts it, off. You, you have like to that. bring the energy up a little bit. Yeah. And so when you're when you're meeting and it's 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 a uh, you would you would feel more comfortable yeah. being like "Let's go, folks" mm-hmm. and it's a joke. I did get some let some let's goes too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. It's yeah. out there. Could have used them on the poll. Uh, Let's go. Maybe should have went to Aaron's uh, show and been sitting home <laughs> voting on this poll because I could have used you. Uh, uh, yeah, it was fun, man. It was really cool. Yeah. And, I did a uh, outdoor event Saturday, charity event. Uh, Anthony and Leanne Cooper were big fans of the podcast, listen, and uh, it, was, it was fun. But it was obviously outdoors. It's so hot. People were – there's bouncy houses. People were spread out. But to his credit, Anthony, without him even asking, he just gets comedy. He got everybody to come, move to the front. Oh, great. So it would all be up, up for even move the chairs up so they'd be a little bit more in the shade. And then when I was done, you know how we all have examples of crazy things we have to follow? Yeah. When I got off stage, immediately after, there was some guy there whose wife is struggling with cancer and they were really down on their bills. They gave him a new car. Hmm. Oh it was parked God. right behind the, behind the stage there. He starts crying. Then that guy gets up, tells this incredible story. Everyone's totally forgot about me at this yeah. point. <laughs> how he died once, but God brought him back from the dead. He had a reason, a purpose for him. Everybody's crying. And I just told Anthony, thank you so much for not putting that in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of, yeah. At, please thank yeah. you for doing it afterwards. Because we've all had to follow. You had to follow something similar to that, right? They it was gave, like a, a soldier. They gave a soldier... Uh, who lost his legs in uh, <laughs> Iraq, and they gave him a car. He walked out. His name is Nate. They gave, then they, 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 they brought him up. They go, these two, these guys, they were giving the car away. Uh, they, they, it's his auctions. It's a Michael Finney's. Uh, I got my billboard up behind me. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was a great event. He would do a golf tournament, and it was. I have a bunch of magicians on it, my and comics. My dad would do it. I got to hang out a lot of old comics, like a lot of guys that did Carson and were on Carson a lot. And it was it was always so fun to talk to them about seventies and eighties comedy and them in the boom and you know. Uh, so I always loved it, and and they were always so funny, dude. These dudes would just murder. Like there's just such a difference. Yeah. That old comic mindset. I, I performed in the round. It was the first time I ever did that in Phoenix, which I've done now since then. But it was one of the first I ever got to do. And 
when you do the round, one of the one of the best was uh, I'll have to get some of these guys' names. I, I'm blanking on. The I remember names. you. I think Tom Dreesen was there. Tom Dreesen has been there. Uh, I met. He talked to my comedy class, comedy college, and uh, when I first started comedy, Tom Dreesen came and spoke. Yeah, uh, which was pretty cool. I mean, he was like very when I, I mean when I first started in 2003, and then I would. See, it's funny to start and then go see him again later. And yeah. Be like, uh, not that he remembers me, but I'm like you talked in our class. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. and then you're doing comedy and you're like in it. Uh, but, uh, they, I, I'll, I'll, I'll get everybody's names and I'm gonna try to, cause you could look these guys up. They're all very, very funny. And, uh, the, so the, we do, when you perform in the round, you can get confused on where you're at. And so you don't, you're kind of like, cause you're kind of make a circle. I, I love the performing in the round, especially for me. I don't move a lot and it makes me kind of make a circle the whole show. And so it makes me move a little more, which I think is is a good thing. And so this guy gets done, and there's exits kind of everywhere, but there's only one exit off the stage. And uh, he just walks down the wrong way. And so, like, it's a circle, he, you, and it's very easy to get disoriented You don't because you don't really know where you're at. And when you spin, so he goes, all right, everybody, and he walks down this ramp, and then everybody's like, you know, everybody goes, give it up, and they keep going. And like, I mean, like three minutes and then he just comes back on the stage and he's like, the door was locked down there and he had to go out and they had, they go, no, you go out that way. And he walked out the right way. Uh, but one of them, they gave a, this vet came, he lost both his legs. He had prosthetic legs and these dudes that were giving the car away. They go, oh, we're going to go up and, and talk. And it's never good when someone doesn't really know how to talk. And it's three, it was three of them. It's either they're going to do two minutes or 40 minutes. Yeah. And you don't know which. Like, they're either going to be too nervous and just fly through it, or they're going to start liking it and get a couple <laughs>, laughs. Yeah. And then they're going to keep, and you can't get them all. It's not going to be great either. It's not going to be great. Either way, it's not good. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so they went the 40 route and did a lot, <laughs> lot of time. And then they bring out the guy. And now that they've, the show's gone long, they have to bring me up pretty quickly. So they bring the guy out. It's very awesome. Give it up, Nate. They give him his keys to the car. He's crying. The whole audience is crying. They're guard, everybody, please welcome Nate Bargetz. <laughs> and they bring up immediately me, and I'm like, oh, my wife is mean. <laughs> like, just whatever. I mean, I have nothing. And I just, just like, basically get through the set for six minutes. You know, never, yeah. maybe get a laugh on the last joke. But it's like, no, and then the show kind of went back to normal. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. That is tough. Uh, also, a big thing that happened this week, uh, uh, which we have video of. Planet Fitness is no more. It's gone. I've it's moved gone. on. You've moved on. Moved on with my life, man. I felt like it was time. And I yeah. think somebody pointed out that you both correctly predicted that this is when it would happen. It would be a couple weeks after I got married. Yeah. Mm. Well, I'm yeah, when Lucy starts looking at all the, the nonsense <laughs> bills, you, you, you're you bringing her a, an education she has to pay off. <laughs> that's friendship going, class. For going nowhere. <laughs> friendship class in Notre Dame. She's like, oh, great. I, get, I just get... <laughs> Loaded with, I don't know, the most expensive debt on earth. I mean, you know, he brought MTSU, and that was they went to he went to college forty five years ago. So he's been he's still paying it off. He's still paying it off. Pays it off a dollar a day. It's a thing like it's a cost of a cup of coffee for him to, go to, to you sponsor me. Yeah. Is yeah. Uh, is your college been paid off? Yeah. Yeah. And then mine was, didn't exist. My parents paid mine off. It was fifteen hundred dollars. I had a joke where it says forty dollars cash. Yeah. Truthfully, it was fifteen hundred. Yeah, not much less than the actual. Yeah, yeah. fifteen hundred dollars is all they because my parents once. I mean, my parents like helped. We'll point everybody kind of with their college debt. Mm -hmm. And I mean, mine was. They didn't even. It was like a. It was. They told our family, kind of together, like they said. Uh, you know, like my. <laughs> brother and sister kind of was like a, almost like a christmas present and on mine i was like what is mine they're like oh, i don't i think we did yours like five we didn't even bring it up <laughs> like it was like not even worth much it was not even worth it was it was it was just not enough to even really matter like it's <laughs> and i paying some bills yeah <laughs> they lump in you know uh so uh your plan of fitness uh, which we have the video. I'm uh, sure some of you watched it. It was on air. We reposted it, right? Mm -hmm. On Nate Land. And then, uh, so if you haven't, we're going to play it for you. Uh, it's a quick video. 
<laughs> I'm joking. That's always the word someone says like that. Guys, don't worry about it. I know you're arson. It's a very <laughs> yeah, pretty quick yeah, video. It's, it's going to go through quick. Uh, I wouldn't play it if it was that long. Uh, no. You ever have somebody showing funny. you a video like on their phone and you, you kind of oh, you tap man. it to see how long yeah. how long is left? Yeah. that's yeah. And then you see it and you're like, <laughs> like come on. 80 dude. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. No, this was a very, very funny video. Hey, how are you feeling? I feel good. I feel like it's the end of a long chapter in my life. But I think the start of uh, something greater. Hey, Allison, my name is Aaron. Uh, I am a member of this particular Planet Fitness. I was hoping to cancel my membership over the phone. Okay, so unfortunately, I don't think we'll be able to do it over the phone, but we do have other options available for you if I can go through those with you. I've given them $10 a month for four years, and I've never stepped foot inside <laughs> the gym. I'm not just doing this for me. I'm doing this for the thousands of people, men and women all across this country, <laughs> who have never gone into Planet Fitness. That's who I'm doing this for. <laughs> Woo! I'm gonna miss not going. <laughs> it's a big part of your life for a long time. It's supposed to be the last four years. It's been a big part of my life. It's not going into this gym. So, yeah, I think I'm nervous, but I'm also excited. I'm excited about what's to come. I'm excited about what else. I'm not going to do. <laughs> and there it is, and the there official is. membership cancellation form. Was it? And you said pretty special. Literally ninety seconds. It was that easy. Oh, dude, it was the easiest thing in the world. They don't care at all. They, dude, the guy was like my age. I walk in, he goes, "Hey, I like your shirt." Very sarcastically, yeah, yeah. and I go, "Oh yeah, I'm here to cancel my membership." Yeah, he goes, he, I don't like your shirt that much anymore. Is that what he said? Yeah, like a funny. Just yeah. he goes, "All right, just give me your." phone number and i'll cancel it i think you could tell you were coming in to cancel with that shirt he you walk in with that shirt i'm not coming go, in to work in jeans and boots on this is a man that's here to cancel yeah. you don't have to say it yeah. it's either cancel or sign up right my intentions yeah my intentions were pretty clear walking in there yeah. i feel like they knew how much money did we figure out that you gave them so it's ten dollars a month and then there's an annual fee of of I think seventy dollars or something like that. Oh. So, so it was enough that I should have canceled yeah, it. Yeah, let's do the ago. exact number. Well, four years would we're be on a podcast. <laughs> we'd like to hear the exact number. That'd be four hundred eighty dollars. Four hundred eighty dollars okay. in in just the monthly fee, plus I think a sixty or seventy dollar annual fee. So that'd be yeah, two hundred another two hundred eighty dollars. A computer with a calculator. <laughs> yeah, well we can we can do the math. Four hundred eighty plus. <laughs> I just want an exact number. <laughs> So we can have something fun to talk about on the a live on a seven, podcast that's going out to a lot of people. Yeah, Seventy times four. There you go. It's two hundred eighty. How yeah. long would y'all's podcast last? Would it just be a lot of like, man, that'd be a pretty crazy day, huh? <laughs> and you don't talk about the day, and then the whole podcast is just y'all going. You mean just me and Brian had a yeah. podcast? <laughs> and it's just you know, it goes. Oh, I went to McDonald's the other day. How much did you spend at McDonald's? Quite a bit. All right, <laughs> so let's uh, move on and. Uh, or was it funner to go thirty thousand dollars? <laughs> That's pretty fun. No, uh, almost a thousand dollars. I think I over th four I think, years. That's it. I think the annual fee is a little bit higher than that. I don't know for sure. So you've seven hundred sixty dollars, yeah, at least, yeah, at the very least, yeah, thousand probably the worst. Mm -hmm. uh, over four years, that's that's not that much. But no, man, that's yeah. so many people that are doing that. I, I put that on TikTok. The amount of com I mean, hundreds of comments of I've been paying for Planet Fitness for years, never yeah. gone in. You've inspired me to come in and to go cancel yeah. this week. And then I got a lot of comments that were like, I run a Planet Fitness. Thank you for this because that allows us to be so cheap. You basically yeah. subsidize to Planet Fitness for four years. Yeah. And that's their business model. And it's very, very effective. It's a I, I'm I'm for their business model. Oh, I I I don't yeah. begrudge them at all. Yeah. It's like it works. It works. We if we don't do it this way, the people that do will work use this and can afford ten dollars a month is mm -hmm. like 
there's a lot of people that do actually get better and healthier because mm, of that. Right. And then there's a lot of yous that are going to die off in groups because <laughs> you're because <laughs> you're canceling. <laughs> You're wearing a McDonald's hat <laughs> the day after you canceled <laughs> Planet Fitness. Right. You can at least fly your true colors now. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Even before. I don't have to pretend anymore. You don't have to pretend it anymore. I finally uh, be my true self, man. Did yeah. they respond to you? Like Planet Fitness themselves? Planet Fitness liked the vid. They they commented on it. They said yeah. distance makes the heart grow fonder. Mm, That's such a good That's answer, what, too. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, They're they, great. They great. They have a sense of humor. All right, I'm gonna themselves. sign up for Planet Fitness. <laughs> yeah, <it's> just, yeah. <laughs> I had a Planet Fitness. I think I canceled. Uh, My mom would have gotten your good. mom went in there <laughs> yeah. and did it for you? Maybe. You think you can <laughs> you probably had it for twelve yeah, years. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. You've been making fun paid. of him. <laughs> yeah, we go. And I, yours is the thousand. And I'm the I'm the white whale that they, <laughs> yeah. they, they, they're Newman. Like, yeah, I'm Newman that they <laughs> scoff been chasing the scoff law they've been chasing forever. Yeah. Uh yeah, that I do I do like their business model being like, no, look, we don't care. You can cancel. Mm -hmm. But you we if you're too lazy to go work out, you're too lazy to cancel. Mm-hmm. But you're not too lazy to go sign up because that day is a good motivating day. And it's also, it's cheap enough that it's not... It's forgettable. You'll forget a you, year easy. You'll just, you just won't even notice it in your credit card statement for a mm -hmm. while. And then you yeah. just, want, you're like, oh, I'm been 10 now. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. I remember as they would go in and someone would say they'd have like pizza parties. I think Lewis uh, yeah. told me that. That was very <laughs> funny. He's talking about going to work out there and he's like, hey, you go in there like... Hey, today not working out. We're gonna have a pizza party, yeah, and you're yeah. like, "Yeah, that's not." They have like cookies on the way out. Yeah, I think. it's pretty crazy. Yeah, that's good though. I think I you got to think you're just trying to get people to do something. Like it's 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 the people that work out real serious. They're the ones that are like you're like, yeah, dude, you do your own thing. Mm -hmm. That's where you go to your own place. Right. This is not that. It's a judgment free zone. <laughs> judgment free zone. No grunting. Right. <laughs> we'll turn no. the lunk alarm <laughs> on. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. Do they have you ever seen it? Hey, look, honestly, it? dude, I kind of walked in there as I'm standing, waiting to yeah. kind of look like a little bit of fun. <laughs> yeah, looking around, there's a lot of people you working thought, like, out. Oh, I should out. have. Uh, should have got a membership. <laughs> Would you go back and get a membership? <laughs> Maybe you and Lucy get I'm, one. No, I'm never going back. Dude. Yeah, I can't. I've yeah. moved on. I, you know, I I would love. I want you to go back now. I come out with like the black card. I upgraded yeah. my package. Yeah. <laughs> I got to talk me into it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh so that brings us to uh what we want to talk about uh this week the human body uh as our topic <laughs> i don't know i think it's I gonna either. be interesting right is yeah, it yeah, i it's think pretty so fun i think so you yeah. guys uh well there are 78 organs in the human body mm -hmm. let's name all of is them. that everybody <laughs> unless you've had an appendix taken out you think there's like 70, but is there one guy that's like 79? <laughs> is there one human that is 79? With an, with an extra, extra organ? organ? Could that's be. There's got to be one. A mute, a mute Yeah. There are five vital what? what? Yeah, I was going to say, back up. A, um, mute, a mutant? A mu mutant? <laughs> mm -hmm. I think he said muted. <laughs> He's still saying I struggled. Weird. I struggled with the word. Mutant. With, uh, how did you say it? I don't know how. A mutant. It. Mutant. Mutant. Mutant? Mutant. <laughs> A mutant. <laughs> a mutant. A mutant. <laughs> you would be, if they had like Wolverines, if the X-Men was real. Yeah. And you just have to, you would be who they show on the news. We didn't want these mutants in here. <laughs> and then they go. <laughs> and, that, and that's how they would. And they that's how they'd fight back. I mean, that's probably, you would, you might get a role in the movie, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, I, if I was, if you're, if you may, if whoever makes X Men is listening to this, and you want a good Southern, you know, person that's it's not acting, it's we don't want those mutants over here. They ain't gonna come to my Planet of fitness and work out. Just the lunk alarm is going off the whole time, and it's it's Brian over in the corner. Well, get on out of here, mutants. <laughs> I could say arrive on water take. <laughs> Everybody has their words. Yep. Bartholomew. Bartholomew. <laughs> wow. Uh, there are five vital organs essential for survival. 
Can you guys guess them? The brain. Your turn, Nate. Heart. Yeah. Aaron. The lungs. Yep. At least, you need at least one of them. Uh. Uh. Kidney. Right. At least one. Mm-hmm. There was one left. It's Don't, a liver. Yeah. Boom. You guys nailed it. That's pretty it, easy. There's only, there's only ones I could name. But <laughs> I just I mean, I was gonna say, ask us to keep going. Well, yeah. Well, this yeah. is you can still live a fairly normal life without one of your lungs, a kidney, your spleen, appendix, gallbladder, tonsils. Uh, it goes on some other things. And if you <laughs> yourself artificial replacements and medication, you can remove your stomach, colon, pancreas, salivary gland, thyroid, bladder, your other kidney. And if you want to keep going, you can remove your eyes, nose, ears, larynx, tongue, lower spine, and rectum. Kind of get an overall, you know, <laughs> trying to uh, cut some weight. <laughs> be like <laughs> when carrying around some, carrying around a little too much. And so I started getting rid of stuff. I'm a garage shell. <laughs> Remind me of a uh, Kramer when he went to went along with with him to sign his thing to yeah. not stay alive. She's like, yank it like you're starting yeah, a mower. Like you're starting a mower. Because <laughs> this is supported by machines, an intensive care unit. They could also take away your skull, heart, and your remaining lug, lung, at least for a short while. Yeah. Man. You can still go to the coffee shop. <laughs> so she's Let's keep it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Question number three. <laughs> you could eat, but machines do everything else. And she's like, I'll st- I would stick. Yeah. And he's like, that's right. Because I still go to the yeah. coffee shop. <laughs> uh most of these stuff, spleen, pancreas, gallbladder. I had to look up what they even do. Yeah, what does a spleen do? It's so X is a filter for your blood. It recognizes old or damaged red blood cells and removes them from your body. By breaking them down and use, saving any useful components, probably with like a little more respect than we're giving it. And I feel like we don't give it any respect. I know we're not even right now. And mm-hmm. I think it would be like it's the yeah. name. He's like, I'm kind of keeping things yeah. clean and good. Yeah, got a pretty big role. Like I would say, the heart <laughs> knows my name. <laughs> like you know, yeah. like it's that's how you tell the <laughs> the heart. Yeah, dude, I can walk up to the heart and talk to it. I don't have to. <laughs> It's not like the heart's like, who's this guy? Who's yeah. what organ is the heart? Like, who is oh, I who know. is who the, is that guy? That's the Conor McGregor. <laughs> who, who is, is that, that who guy? Who is that guy? It would probably be the lungs, because I learned that one lung is smaller than the other because of the heart. Yeah. Oh, because it because the space in your body. The heart's right next to it. Yeah. So wait, that doesn't make sense. No, I'm saying which part your heart would know about the lungs. Well, I was just thinking about as far as respect. The lung has to bow down to the heart. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I, I mean, like, it's like the like, spleen. Doesn't even know he exists. Like, doesn't even know, you know, like, what? what is it? Your tonsils is the heart's like, what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What are you even, who let you in here? And you, you're like, <laughs> you're barely in. Yeah. That's what he would say. You're barely in the body. You're outside the body. You're so close to the exit, dude. When I you're- need to know what the weather is, I'll hit you up. But like other than that, beat it. Like you're, you know, yeah. I'd rather talk to the tongue. You know, disgusting that is. That's what I think the heart. That's tongue's the tongue's a big talker. The tongue's a big talker. Yeah. When I need to know the wind direction tonsils, I'll give you a heads up. <laughs> but I don't think you you got some you got some nerve coming down here and thinking you can mix it up with us down here. And then the spleen is you know, respected. Yeah. yeah. The large intestines is about five feet long. Small intestines, 22 feet long. It's pretty long. Yeah. Yeah. It's very long. I think, yeah, I think I kind of knew that. Yeah, I, I, knew it. I didn't know the like number, that. but I knew it was real yeah. long. And you yeah. knew the small intestines was a much longer one? I think I did know that. Yeah. I don't know if I cared. <laughs> mm. So it's gonna be a long next hour there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm giving you the good stuff off the top. Oh. <laughs> Are some parts of our bodies that <laughs> it's only gonna go downhill like, from here. I can't wait. Let's get to the interesting stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're way past yeah. that. Yeah, I'm done. Uh some parts of the bodies that we don't need, scientists say because of evolution. The appendix. That's one of them. Used to be when we were uh only eating plants that the appendix served a function, but now it says it serves no real function. But we still have it. We still have it. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
And might it, as well, can, it can kill you. Yeah. If it ruptures. Yeah. Yeah. Might as well get rid of it. Might as well get rid of it. Do you think there could be there be a day where they get rid of it? Like the tonsils? Like they just want to go? There's no reason for it? I mean, I think that's one reason they get rid of it pretty quick. That's such a weird, arrogant thing for doctors to be like, you don't even need it anymore. You're like, well, it's in there, nobody. You only leave it alone. <laughs> Guy that just showed up in a room. That's what I want to say to these. You know, we don't need that. You should get rid of it. Should I? Should I just run in the store real fast and go <laughs> get, rid get rid of my appendix? How about you not throw that in my head and let it live? Yeah. yeah. Better have it, not yeah. need it then. Yeah. Uh, yeah need then it, turns it. out we need it at some point. Mm hmm. Uh, wisdom teeth serve no purpose. I have three. Did you get them taken out? No. I, uh, no, still there. Man. I like, I got my tonsils and I have my wisdom teeth. So you got all the organs. I brought everything with me. That's right. I'm a loyal guy. If it's you show up. I bring you. <laughs> you want to see the end of this movie? I let everybody come. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like it. Y'all just start bailing on your, you start getting rid of people left and right. Yeah. I bring them all. <laughs> yeah. It's funny that like, you still have your wisdom teeth because the reason it says that we get rid of them is the human brain grows larger. It reduces space in the mouth, crowding out the third set of molars. But over time, brains have gotten bigger, so there's no room for them, generally speaking. Mm. So my brain can't grow as far? It, it may not just be as big. That's why they get to stay. How big can they possibly? I mean, where is this? Come on. How well, big, this is how, prehistoric man they're talking about. Well, yeah. why don't we address that when you're reading this But, I mean, there's some I cases, like, apparently, like that... From a story in 1997. It still works <laughs> like, today. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I haven't got mine taken out. I have three. I figured that. I have three. Uh, <laughs> no. I don't know. That's a very, that's a very <laughs> funny put down yeah. to say to someone, and they go, I don't know if I wasn't to that. Yeah, yeah that I, explains I a lot. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Goosebumps. Goosebumps. But, great books. Uh, says our ancestors' hair would stand up to make us appear more threatening to predators. Goosebumps said this. It seems like they would say it. <laughs> That's how you read that. As you go, <laughs> Goosebumps, like the way he talked to a spokesperson of Goosebumps. He showed up in the room. Yeah. He came in and he's like, hi, everybody. <laughs> that's, that's how Goosebumps only talk is just, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the, and you're like, all right, hey, hey. Yeah, relax. Come. And he goes, I keep, but if I relax, I'm going to go away. And they go, okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> We're really excited right now. Uh, what did you say about him? Yeah, I, was I forgot. I was about to ask yeah. for the fact again. Uh, goosebumps make your hair stand up on your yeah, body, yeah. which yeah. makes us seem larger to predators. Kind of like when a cat's hair raises up on its back it's to scare away predators oh you know? oh it's like peacocking yeah yeah okay i don't know if goosebumps does that too well too much i mean I, yeah i mean I, I guess this is prehistoric man yeah this is our are ancestors. we getting to now man i'm just trying to <laughs> all right yeah i'm just talking about some some parts yeah. of our body that we don't need anymore yeah, yeah. We, we don't need goosebumps anymore well that don't serve a purpose to scare people off well, maybe they do, but generally speaking, that's not what they're used for now. Male nipples. <laughs> Most men don't need their nipples anymore. But I got dumb fat ones. I'd like to get rid of them. <laughs> uh, every fetus starts out as a female. Yeah. And eventually, testosterone causes it to either become male or female. That's all going to change pretty soon. <laughs> 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 I, don't think that's what you're, I think that's what you're supposed to say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going to get rid of that. Have a yeah. special show and yeah. make yeah. an announcement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get the boo, get the pink, uh, yeah. the tailbone. Um, we, our ancient ancestors used to have tails. Uh, but we, You have a tail in the womb, right? As a fetus, you have a tail. I'm pretty sure. Some people are born with them. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty rare. Mm. But people can have tails. A, yeah. Just to have to cut a hole in your jeans your whole life. Yeah. Just that alone. Just the tailor cost of it's like your plan of fitness. <laughs> yeah. That. Yeah. If you have a tail. Who had a tail? And what movie did they? Uh, George Cassandra or Jason Alexander is a tail. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, it's the one where Jack Black. Yeah. Bates Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah. Can't think of that. Right, I regret looking at that. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, oh. <laughs> uh, my bad, guys. Don't look up vestigial tails. Because yeah. Did that, you just know that word? No, it's on. I Google human tail. Oh, 
And then that's what it's called. Well, look, look at the people also ask. Can a human have a tail? Yeah. Humans do have a tail, but it's only for a brief period during our embryonic development. There you go. It's most pronounced at around day 31 to 35 of gestation, and it regresses into the four or five used vertebrae becoming our coccyx. In rare cases, the regression is incomplete and usually surgically removed at birth. So if you're born with one, they usually just take it off. But I guess maybe if it's too big, they're like, this kid is just going to grow up with a tail. Oh, if it's too big, they can't. I don't know. I mean, why else yeah. would they leave it around? I just be different. <laughs> <laughs> just to set the kid apart just a little set, bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We all need a thing. We all need a thing. We all need a gimmick. Mm-hmm. You had Planet Fitness. It's gone. Yeah. That was like your tail. Yeah, but I could have been the tail comic. Yeah. <laughs> the tail, yeah. How was that comic last week? Well, he uh, had a tail. Yeah. What'd he talk about? He, uh, you can t- you a can lot tell of which, tail stuff. You can tell which jokes he liked. <laughs> he, he, he's he, he, he's, <laughs> he's he, he goes, Oh, he likes this one. Oh, here we go. This must be his closer. <laughs> here comes the punchline. Uh, he, got really, he got really going up there. <laughs> Knocking the uh, water off the <laughs> stool. <laughs> Everything turns around. <laughs> they go. I'm sorry. Everything's got to be in front of them. Uh, the curtain's yeah. moving. <laughs> 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 As when he goes to the when he walks to the stage, he's like, "Can I walk through the back a different way?" It yeah. gets hit like a you get hit the head with a backpack on a plane. I <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> uh, an average size man eats about 33 tons of food in his his lifetime. Oh, well, give or take. <laughs> it's about the weight of six elephants. That's how much we eat. Six elephants. That's all. You know, you'd think you eat more elephants than that <laughs> in a lifetime. You would have guessed more than that? Six well, elephants? If you think, just think of it in the elephant realm. Yeah. African yeah, elephant. You're going to eat the big ones. The big ones. Yeah, you're going to eat six of them. And they brought you six, and they go, that's enough for your life. I think. <laughs> got a ration. Yeah, like day one, they just give you six elephants. Yeah. And they go, you got to make this last, buddy. For your life. Yeah. So let's and see. then once you got to the first one, you'd be like, oh, that's a little bit quicker than that. Right <laughs> yeah. I'm four, and I'm already done yeah. with one. Yeah. <laughs> then two run off and you're like well, I didn't know how to lock them up yeah. like, you know, you <laughs> and now you're down in three and you're like oh my god I gotta eat I, I flew through that first one and then the other two kind of caught wind with what was going on and now the third one's they're pretty old to be honest can I get more elephants and they go no no we gave them to you, and we gave them to you. <laughs> um, <laughs> the average person produces enough saliva in their lifetime to fill two swimming pools. Mm-hmm. Probably a little bit more than I thought. I don't think I would have thought. Mm. Two swimming pools? Of spit. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot, dude. Mm-hmm. That's way more than I would have thought. I mean, I would have guessed like a this table, <laughs> like a cup. <laughs> I'll say like ten gallons. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How often do you spit? I, I used to spit a bunch when I was a kid. Well, it doesn't spit. have to come out to count. Just the slob yeah. in your mouth that you swallow. Well, then how do they count it? Well, they I don't, don't know. They don't know, dude. That's an excellent. There's question. no one. There's no way <laughs> this a all person made even knows that. There's just zero chance of that. There's zero chance I believe a doctor could ever know this or a scientist. Yeah. I just go along with it. Yeah. All right. There's that's that's what you do when they tell you stuff. Yeah. They're two swimming pools. <laughs> Come on. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. They can find slob wherever they want to. If they need if you go, oh, I got about one filled. Uh, and they go, <laughs> they can find some more. Yeah. And they scrape together and that pool starts changing a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And they go, well, that's a pretty big pool. It's an like Olympic sized pool. Yeah. You go, well, you said pool. <laughs> so above ground, kids' pool. <laughs> Kitty pool. Yeah. What kind of pool are we talking about? <laughs> yeah. 50% of your hand strength comes from your pinky finger. There's a little more, that deserves a little more respect. Yeah. The pinky finger? Yeah. 50%. You mean of, like uh, grip strength? Yeah, like lift that cup yeah. without your pinky. Oh, you can't yeah. Can't do it, can you? 
Yeah, no, you can. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's, yeah, it's twice as hard. That was so easy. Your hand. <laughs> I mean, I think Dude. the most famous way of drinking is to drink with your pinky <laughs> off the cup. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you don't want to bring your dumb gorilla hand in here knocking the china all over the place. The cut Larry. Just as you, the cut Larry. <laughs> just got... <laughs> you're like, could you take your pinky off the... T-? Sorry. And then you're like, oh, I'm like a ballet dancer. Did you, speaking of cut Larry, did you see the interview with... Uh, I mean, I know you didn't, but this Demi, Demi Lovato was on doing some interview and they asked her... Uh, they asked her what her favorite dish was, mm-hmm. and she was like, "Oh, probably coffee mugs." She thought they meant she thought they meant Uh-oh. like dishes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she talked about it for a while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was like, "They can hold hot stuff." <laughs> yeah. The interviewer's like, "Okay, that's not really what yeah. we meant," but they just let her go and then correct her. I think they were just nice about it. Oh, that's good. <laughs> It's funny because you no one ever goes, "What's your favorite dish?" and means plate or yeah. cup or. Well, who would ask somebody that? Yeah. What's your favorite thing <laughs> that you put? Food we should on just say kitchen? food. That's because the it, person. It's a weird way to word the question. A, yeah. What's your favorite dish? That's a person that's kind of like just ask it like we're talking, dude. Like, mm-hmm. be normal. Yeah. And just say, "What do you? What, what's your favorite thing to eat?" Yeah. Like, don't say dish. Uh-huh. You saying dish? The dish? The guys? The whoever asked the question is the problem. <laughs> You think? I yeah. don't, but I, I can't ever imagine thinking somebody's asking me, what's your favorite like plate Nobody or asks, saucer yeah. or anything? I know. I agree with that. But like why she gets confused is because how many people go, What's your favorite dish? And mean like food. Like right. no one really says that either. I know you say in the right circumstance you can say, it, but if you're asking me a hundred questions, yeah. Just ask what kind of food I want to eat. Right. It's no one's fault. And I look yeah, it's I just, know it's that just this a is funny it's a funny up. thing. Yeah, it's just but I would say before we before you rail on one person, let's talk about the other person. And be like, don't say it weird, dude. Yeah. Don't like. No one says it like. I that. agree. That was a strange way to word it. Humans are the only animals with chins. We're the only ones, according to according yeah. to this. Yeah, according to this. <laughs> you tell me a gorilla doesn't have a chin. According to them, the chin has to go some at least straight down or forward. It can't just. Yeah, well, that's what someone. Well, that's, yeah, that's what someone says. The scientist says you got called out, <laughs> and he goes, "No, but it's got to go back." And you're like, yeah. "All right, dude, it's a chin." Though. Yeah, they pull up a gorilla. I mean, he's got a chin. It looks like a chin. Looks like a chin to me. Type in gorillas. Do they have chins? <laughs> this is what we've got. This is the podcast. This is the chins. human body episode. This is our tagline. The gorillas have chins. Even chimpanzees and gorillas, our closest genetic cousins, lack, lack chins. chins. Instead of poking forward, their lower jaws slope down and back from their front teeth. It looks like a chin. I mean, that looks like a totally like a chin there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's read for this a chin stroking mystery. <laughs> yeah. What uh, what was it? If you go back to it, it said one thing is what animals have chins? Is the question. Mm-hmm. Just humans. humans. Humans are the only animals that have chins, according to them. We're the only ones that can say it. <laughs> That's why. That is true. I'm sure others have it. They'd love to tell us yeah. about it, but they can't. You can see like a lot of like an elephant doesn't have much. You know, <laughs> it just like goes down. It's like a lip. <laughs> it's got that trunk to cover it. You could have an elephant. You could let him chew on your arm for quite a while. And it just would be like, it'd get slobbery. And you'd be like, all right, dude. One of the ones you have to eat. I'll tell you. And he starts eating you. You can't do that. I, And he said... The elephant goes, we were provided one human to eat in our lifetime. That happened. Yeah. So, But the human doesn't know that. So it's them against each other. And he doesn't realize, he's like 16. He finally goes, are you serious? And then they come together. And they die alone at 17. <laughs> uh, your liver is the only organ that can completely regenerate itself. If someone donates their liver to someone, their liver will go back to its original size in about six months. So wait, I did not know that. It's like a lizard's tail. Yeah, or so so, someone's got to give you one. If you lost your liver, yeah, yeah. yeah, If you donated your liver, it would go. Yours would grow back. Oh, mine would grow back. Mm -hmm. Oh, so we should people just give livers away? Mm -hmm. 
you should give them away a lot more than you do. Once a year, just yeah, get it out of there. And, yeah. yeah. You think that works an unlimited amount of times? Or at a certain point, I looked up your if, body like, how long are we going to keep yeah, doing I Googled, I, could you give donate a liver multiple times? And I couldn't find an answer to that. Yeah. Mm. There's, your, there's your answer to the first question. Yeah. When they, I mean, you start just asking a couple other questions. So I can do this forever. And then he goes, I don't. <laughs> and that's when he goes, Every oh, you know, we're the only ones that have chins. And you go, are you serious, dude? That's how they get you off. You go, you know, gorilla doesn't have a chin? You go, well, it doesn't. And then once you, once you start challenging that you go he goes you know you eat six elephants a year and you go, yeah. like in a room you go give me six like you're you don't even know what's happening yeah, yeah. Can you imagine all these answers can't it's the next question just, yeah just destroys the, <laughs> the one before go, i don't know dude. yeah i mean why would i look that up <laughs> I know one buddy of mine, his liver grew back, is what he told me. <laughs> That's what it would get down to. I got a buddy of mine. A friend of his. His liver fell out, <laughs> yeah. and it grew back. Can you imagine donating your liver? <laughs> See you guys in six months. I'll be back. Your body sheds about eight pounds of dead skin a year. Most of those cells settle as dust in your home. Oh, that's fun. That's, that's what dust is, a huh? big portion of dust is dead skin cells. I feel like I didn't need to know that. Yeah. Well, you had to fill some time, so we had to do it. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying. No. I got plenty of stuff. To, like, those are the good ones, though. Oh. <laughs> I'm saying I want to be oh. pretty aware of dust when I get back home. Yeah. It's just just dead skin floating around. How do they know that? Well, that seems like one of the easier ones. It seems like it makes out. sense, but I don't but know. No, the amount that you just leave a human locked up for a year and then. See how dusty their house is? Yeah. <laughs> You've lost weight. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah this place is a mess. Floating around. Yeah. I remember seeing a story about a study, you know, people that do medical studies and stuff for money, where they paid a guy, I think, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 to just lie down for months <laughs> and never get up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was thinking about How that. How much did you make? <laughs> <laughs> That's good, Brian. How, uh, what what did they do? They just wanted to observe the effects of, of Lying being down. horizontal yeah. for a long amount of time. So these people volunteered and did it, and they got yeah. paid a lot of money to just lie down. Yeah, forty. Like yeah, and they said it was pre- it was pretty rough. Yeah, just oh, being yeah. on your back for. Could they months. stand? Yeah, that's got to be. It's got to be crazy. I'll look that back. I'll look that up. We'll come back to it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> How fast could the human body run? So far, the fastest anyone has run is 27 and a half miles per hour by Usain Bolt. Mm. One of America's at, greatest runners. Yeah. He's at the world record, 100 meter dash in 2009. That's the fastest. But if you went 15 miles an hour um, for four minutes, that'd be the four minute mile. 15, minute, 15 miles an hour for a mile would be four minutes, I should yeah, say. That's been done, right? Yeah. yeah. But when Floyd Bachelor broke the four minute mile, it never been done, and then right after that, a lot of people started doing it. But that was a big mm-hmm. milestone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like, yeah, mentally, you just know. We talked about that, right? Like it can yeah. be, it can be. Broke. Once you know it can be done, it, then you're like, oh, we can do it. Was it Roger Bannister? I think Floyd Bannister was a baseball player. Is it the people that made Bannisters? <laughs> the Bannister brothers. The Bannister <laughs> family. Yeah. The Bannister brothers in the helm. Yeah, a couple ne'er do wells. Yeah, they got the least amount of money they made was from this track stuff. Yeah. And now someone's broken for two miles, broken the eight minute, which is even more impressive. Somebody did two miles in seven minutes, 58 seconds. Oh, well, we can keep going forever. I mean, well, no, when will it stop? But can you? There's a, there's a, yeah. theoretically, there's a, there's a limit. Yeah. You can't run a mile in 10 seconds, right? Where is, <laughs> so far. where is the limit? What is, peak? yeah, when does it stop? Yeah. Right. When, when does the body reach? When reaches? can the human body, not get any better but everybody's body is always going to be different you're going to grow like that's what you always see everybody always says it like look at kids now yeah when you see young kids like kids in high school you're like were we that big in high school like i don't remember being that everybody's so big yeah Mm -hmm. and you're like i don't think we were that any i mean we had some kids that were that big but it feels like kids look older now a lot quicker uh you know uh, uh all this kind of stuff so, yeah, I don't know. Does it? Yeah, it is crazy to think like when what would stop? Like Usain Bolt was the fastest. Is someone someone's got to be faster than him? Yeah, you think hundreds of years from now his records will look silly? 
to people. Yeah, I don't know if they the silly. I mean, they yeah. always the records always look silly anyway. And the fact that it's always like point five, and mm-hmm. they're like, "Well, that's ridiculous." Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It's not you. You in your head, you want it to be like eight seconds. I mean, Katie Ledecky. That, oh, I watched hers. Did we talk about that? Mm-hmm. We've talked yeah. about her before, but did she just do the Olympic trial? Yeah, yeah, she did the Olympic trials, and I'm so. I mean, she doesn't even. Did she get it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, no one's even. Did Simone Biles make the team? Yeah. For, okay. And then, uh, so uh, the girl that came, the race was the second place, and the girl that did it was 15, uh, which was kind of crazy. And I like, yeah, because I have it. I think I got it recorded because it was a show Harper. Uh, but this girl was like 15, and then she she does it. But Katie Ledecky's, she's got the world record for her thing. It's She's the first 23 records of the world record. 23. Wow. Are all her times. 23 world records. 23 workers. One through 23. Mm-hmm. And I, whatever, I think it's the 800 is her. That's and insane. 24th is the next best person that's ever lived. Next best person is 24th. And when they showed it, they go one page and they go to another page. And it's wow. and it, there's not even like one in the middle. It's straight it's just all her. her. It's crazy. And so like with her being that fast, yeah, I don't know. Maybe someone's going to catch up. I mean, it's, uh, she's so, I mean, that's, she beats them by so much. They're mm. not even in the screen. You just watch her and you almost, you could almost just watch the second race. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, by the way, just to so forget, Katie's ra- racing it. She's yeah, going to win. She won a while ago. She won now a while ago. trying to do the second, yeah. She's up there getting a <laughs> Diet Coke at the concession stand. And she's back eating popcorn. You're like, oh, she's not racing this? Yeah. No, no, she finished. Right. She's, I, f- I feel like from the sports episode. <laughs> that's what I'd want to see, So, <laughs> is how quick. They could get out. <laughs> how quick can she get out and go do something <laughs> yeah, yeah. before they finish? That's what they should do. Katie, right when you get done. <laughs> I want you to go, like, what can you, can you get a hot dog in the third row? Like, you know, can you, could you, by the time you get done, I don't know, you, 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 you've you eating half the hot, like you've, uh-huh. no one's going to come and go, did you bite that hot dog? They realize it, you've eaten enough of it, that they're like, oh, that's your hot dog. Yeah. And how far up the stands can you get? Can you go buy it? You know, like, I was, have you already showered? Could you change? Could you have jeans on? Yep. Could you? Could you have jeans could on? You have by jeans on by the time they, everybody else finishes. That's what I was going to say. That would make the Olympics more interesting. That would get ratings up. <laughs> then she's got something to race towards. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what is she racing to? Yeah. Well, I want you to go get some. You know, have a have some jeans on a, a hanger. And see in the locker can, room. Yeah. And she's got. I don't know. Or even she gets I mean, to she the end, that she jumps up and sprints. To yeah, the, she's got to run and go put some jeans on. I love that. <laughs> yeah. That would make it awesome. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, I feel like from the sports episode, we talked about another swimmer that was coming on that they thought, was it the 15-year-old? Or are they saying uh, she's maybe. the next big thing? Uh, I don't know. She barely won, but I'm sure if she's 15 and she's going to the Olympics. She's got to be. Yeah. But no one's even. No one else is even close. Close to Katie. Um, as a general rule, a person can survive without water for only three days. Mm. Mm. Is it what's the rule? Three days, three weeks, three months. It's like water, three days, food, three weeks, something else, three months. I don't Air, know. You heard that? Oxygen, three months. I don't know. Uh, uh, I was maybe it's the air, three minutes, water, three days. Yeah, that sounds food, right. three weeks. That sounds right. Yeah. Uh, people yeah. who have had hunger strikes though have gone. You need up- that. You need that. F- you need that number though. You need it to all be threes just so you remember. Like that's how dumb we Should are. Should I stop holding my get, breath? Then you go like, no, dude, three, three. Remember? Three, three, three. You go, oh, yeah. Because I haven't been drinking water. And my body it feels fine. And But you, you would do this every time. You always think it's four, four, four. And that's it's three. Three, three. <laughs> Always remember that. Three. Just every three days, do something. Yeah. You know, every three of something, eat, breathe. What you know, just, every, just get. You know, just, just put three. it on your bathroom mirror. Three should be your three. favorite number. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, people who've done voluntary hunger strikes have gone up to two months without eating. One guy uh, died in prison after a sixty-six day hunger strike. 
So you can go a lot longer without food, is what I'm saying, than you can without water. Um, how long could someone go without sleep? The record, 264 hours, which is just over 11 days. Man. Can you imagine? 11 days. Tristan just sent me uh, a link to, apparently this is what I was thinking of. This is the three days, three week, three months rule of adopting a dog. Oh. <laughs> it was, had nothing to do with what we were talking about. I still think there's some I think there's there something, something to what I said. I think I yeah. I've heard that. Okay. Well, you it's making me feel like a real idiot over <laughs> it's here. All about dogs, man. It's all about okay. Yeah. Right. Three well maybe it's four four four. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I feel like I can hold my min- I can hold my breath for not pre- three pre- minutes. Long. I could do over three minutes, no problem. Over three minutes. All right, I'll get to that. I'll skip sleeping. Uh, no, uh, no, the no, sleeping sleep, thing sleeping I want to know. Sleeping stuff is good. But you think you could hold your breath for f- over three I, minutes? I think if I absolutely needed to, you can always do it longer than you. Oh, I mean, all right. <laughs> what? what? Of course. Like, you're like, if I gun to my head, I'm forced underwater. That's what I'm I, saying. Like, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I think everybody could do everything. I don't think anybody, you're, that's another plan. This is how the Krispy Kreme challenge started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah. what we've been reduced to. We need now. to do another holding Krispy the Kreme. breath challenge. <laughs> to I'll about- eat as many Krispy Kremes as you can hold your breath, and I don't think I'm gonna get that many. In. <laughs> Let us lock you in a thing for three minutes. Like it will what? My co- dad, like yeah, coffin or something. My dad has a lot of magic stuff. I got, oh, I got, sure. I can get to a lot of things that can lock you in water. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, water's no, water's a different. Thing. Well, it's got to be. Are you cheat? Scares me. Well, how are they going to make you hold your breath yeah. unless you're underwater? Yeah. I'm an honest guy. Be <laughs> truthful, dude. And you go. I swear to God, I'm not. I'm not doing it. <laughs> the hug, you just talk like that. <laughs> I I'm promise you, it. I'm not breathing. I promise you. I found I swear it. Swear to you, I'm not breathing. <laughs> the survival rules of three. I don't think it's a touch screen, if you don't mind. <laughs> Handling that computer like a gorilla just got it. You just bent it backwards and. <laughs> I mean, God, your pinky is the strongest part of your, if you don't mind jamming it through that. I mean, that bent backwards like that was. Ah, I got it, man. I got it. Hold it by the base of it. Yeah. I mean, could they have made this infographic any more difficult to read? Three seconds I mean, without Let's follow hope. the little loop-de-loo down here. Yeah. Three seconds without hope. Without hope. What is that? If you have no hope, you can't survive for three three minutes without air, three hours without shelter, three days without water, three weeks without food, three months without companion. I go golfing (laughs) in four hours. What shelter do I? I guess the the cart. I've walked (laughs) three hours without shelter, like in a hurricane. I think it meant this is not a good extreme heat or cold. Yeah, this is three weeks without food, (laughs) three months without water. Three days without a companion? No. I mean, no, three months it's without crossed up companion. This is the worst. This is the worst chart. Oh, they're I've saying which one's why true. Did, why don't they just put it right no, next to it? It's all supposed to be true. I can't have three months. I can't survive three months without a, a companion. <laughs> it seems like a dream. I'd like to try. <laughs> uh, Fantasy camp. Yeah. I'd be calling my wife in two weeks. <laughs> How long do you uh, microwave? Uh, <laughs> oh, he's got another one here. He's got, yeah. He's got another, another graphic rule of three. Okay. Three. You can survive without air or in icy waters for three minutes. You can survive without air or in, in icy waters for three minutes. You, you can survive for three hours without shelter in a harsh environment. You can survive for three days without water. You can survive for three weeks without food. There it is. You can? It's saying you, saying you can up to. That's, that's Oh, you yeah. can survive without ice and water for three. Oh, I read that. That was all. That was the guy, the dish question. Yeah. I did well, that. With how the, did you read it? I was reading it completely wrong. I was the dish guy asking her that question. That's how that was being read. You you can survive like it's a, like it's a positive like you can survive like I easily can survive <laughs> but they're saying that like no this is all you can do yeah <laughs> three hours and sh- without shelter in a harsh environment which those naked and afraid is that three days without water three weeks without food wow all basic your body tells you this now if you don't know those rules 
you've got the fours down. Well, maybe good if you don't know the rules. Maybe you can do four days. Because you're, yeah. you know, you're like, well, I didn't know there was three. And you go, how do you not die? Well, I've never heard of these rules. <laughs> <laughs> and they you go, can actually go to four. I know. went 48 years without a companion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Barely had shelter. Yeah. <laughs> uh so sleeping uh a 17 year old high school student set the world record for longest going out sleeping that was the guy went over 11 days um but after three or four nights without sleep you will start to hallucinate i bet i could do longer than people i could do longer than normal person i i I never just nod off really never i mean no. You never just watch golf on the no. couch and just fall asleep? No. And the only way is if I, like, really did something. Like, if I, I'm not on much sleep and I'm laying there and, like, I could close my eyes. But I don't, like, I never wake up and go, I've been asleep for an hour or something like mm-hmm. that. Like, mm-hmm. I never nod off. I mean, I'm trying to think. I, yesterday, we, we had our uh, golf club championship this weekend. And I've been getting up at, like, 7 every day. And I don't go to bed till like, 2 so I'm not on much sleep, and I lay there and watch golf. And I mean, I would I would close my eyes trying to go to, but I'm trying to go to sleep. I don't ever just like just nod off. My but club championship, I just missed the top twenty five this oh, weekend. Yeah, twenty yeah. six. <laughs> There's only twenty six players. <laughs> <laughs> that was my big thing all weekend was just to go. <laughs> Just trying to battle out for a top 25. <laughs> How many players are there? 26. Uh, <laughs> I played there. What's the longest you guys have gone without sleep? Because uh, you slept? Probably a couple of days. You slept for 24 hours. I once. slept for over 24 hours yeah. once. Yeah. I used to pull all nighters all the time in, at, in school. And I think yeah. I've done two in a row. I think I've yeah. done 48 hours. Yeah. yeah. Maybe a, a little less than that. I think I've done about the same. Like, you know, you too, some of like your weird flights or you're not. Mm-hmm. And I don't just fall asleep. I have a hard time kind of getting there. So, yeah. What's yours, Brian? I remember once staying up in college all night to do a finish a paper and turn it in early that morning. Yeah. So it was probably close to 24 hours. Yeah. But that's it. I, I need a lot of sleep. Yeah. <laughs> like a koala bear. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't know if they need sleep. I think you're right. Do don't they? they yeah. Don't they, they sleep, sleep most it feels of the like time? A koala bear. Yeah. Don't you think that's probably a good animal to describe for you? It's like a sweet animal. You know. Yeah, it's like sweet, weak. <laughs> they sleep 18. <laughs> <laughs> Has to stay kind of really up and high and yeah. hidden. Like can't can't afford to get attacked. <laughs> Wouldn't last long. Wouldn't last long. <laughs> Uh, koalas sleep 18 to 22 hours a day so yeah. you nailed yeah. it yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but they did a study on people's sleep habits and found if you got regularly got four hours of sleep a night that was the equivalent of adding eight years of aging to your brain so it's bad yeah yeah bad to not get sleep yeah mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> that was worded like the can thing <laughs> like at first I'm like oh it's a good thing wait <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So now we're getting to breathing. How long could someone go without breathing? Permanent brain damage begins after only four minutes without oxygen. Well, so that's a three through three is a lie. <laughs> well, well, if you get to four minutes, you're gonna have brain, brain damage, damage. But so yeah, maybe, maybe stop at three. But the, but what's the record of holding breath? So the record just just got set the, oh. March of this year. A guy in Croatia. Held his water underwater for 24 minutes, 30 Held seconds. his water underwater? <laughs> I'm sorry. Held his breath underwater. Yeah. Okay. He brought his own water to this? <laughs> is there some water that's a little like, oh, there, why is the middle of that water looks weird, dude? <laughs> yeah. I don't, trust, I don't trust these results. So how long? Uh, 24 minutes. He held his breath underwater for 24 minutes. That's longer than an episode of Friends, they said, or no, any wow. sitcom. What? What was the record before that? I don't know. David Blaine's done yeah, it for I'll like... Yeah, i say David Blaine did it. I remember this. David Blaine did yeah. it for 17 minutes. Yeah. So, 24 Newark minutes to beat it For oxygen-assisted static apnea. What is this? 17 minutes. I just don't know if I believe this. You can hold your breath for 17... 
And this dude did 23 minutes? He said he trained his uh, heartbeat to slow down and... Yeah. yeah. If you can train yourself, yeah, your pulse is so slow when you're holding it, like 10 or something. Crazy. It says most people can hold their breath somewhere between 30 seconds and two minutes. Navy SEALs can hold their breath underwater for two to three minutes, sometimes more. And they did 23 this one, minutes. This one guy did 24 minutes, 37 seconds. But I, I want to, is there, is it just as simple as holding your breath? Like most of us have seen... I got to be honest, that does not look like the guy who I think would have the record. That guy looks like he has no lung capacity whatsoever. Yeah, he's like in his 50s or 56. There he is right there. But he did it to raise awareness for. He broke the world record for the the long. First time hearing about it. (laughs) I mean, to go, he's going to have brain damage just to. He got brain damage like eight, what is it, like eight times over or seven or. Seven over a little seven times over. Yeah. Not seven, six times over. And then uh, <laughs> and then you're going, and he's like, well, I'm raising awareness to what? <laughs> it was something in Croatia. Can you imagine coming out of the water after 24 minutes? They're waiting to interview. <laughs> What's your favorite dish? <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Coffee mug. <laughs> Sorry. Play. I don't know why I said Let me just catch my breath for a second. Keep, can't. <laughs> You go, I don't know why I said coffee mug. It's stupid. Uh, play. You know. I'm sorry. Let me get my brain. A bowl. A bowl. That's, yeah, okay. Go ahead. And they're like, no, you food. Oh. It says he broke the record for the longest time breath held voluntarily. <laughs> and they stipulated that like somebody, somebody who didn't want to held it for 30 minutes or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great Seinfeld joke. The involuntary, the bobsled. Yeah. Uh, involuntary. It's the luge, bob, right? The luge. Yeah. He goes, ah, they put people on it. Didn't, he goes, didn't even want to do it. World record. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, just threw him down there. Uh, so how long could a person live? A recent study said that even if you survive all diseases, like if they cured cancer, everything, and you didn't get hit by a bus, the longest our bodies can just hold up is somewhere between 120 to 150 years. It's pretty long. Yep. The world record's 122 years. Wow. That's the longest person to ever live? Mm-hmm. Just seen everything. When did she, when they die? She died in 1997. I mean, just... Man, she so, was born in 1870. She said, I want to see Nate graduate, Yeah, and then I'm out. 1875 she was born? 1875. So, I mean, she remembered the 1800s. Like, mm-hmm. to talk about them. She was an adult in the She was an adult. Yeah. She could drive. 25. I mean, she was... <laughs> huh? She could drive. She could drive. They didn't have cars. Not legally, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, she... I mean that that person's got to be like I uh, what is it? Yeah. So it says she's born 1875, 25 and 1900. 1925, she's fifty. Yeah, <laughs> she's fifty in 1925. But she didn't just die; she died over twenty years ago. She couldn't vote until but, her forties. Uh, you know that's pretty oh, wild. Yeah, and then she stuck around another seventy yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Good for her. So there's a lady in West Virginia who holds the record for recovering from death. (laughs) She was declared clinically dead for 17 hours after doctors failed to detect brain activity. Her son stated that her her skin had already started to harden. Her hands and toes were curling up. They were already drawn up. She was taken off life support and funeral arrangements were in progress. However, 10 minutes after being taken off life support, she revived and recovered. Yes, you do. I tried to see if she was still alive. Yeah, by bus on the way out. I know. Go, I know. Oh, man. This happened in 2008, and I Googled her name to see if I could see if she's still alive, and What's I couldn't her find name? her. Velma Thomas. How could you not find her? There's Velma Thomases, but not the one that I don't think that's That's her. the story you read, the NBC, ABC News? The yes. Top? Yes. Mm-hmm. This is not the right person no. at all. All right. All right, uh, I'll get back to it. I mean, how do, how does this? There's, uh, I mean, you can Google me and find a lot of stuff out. And a lady that uh, she she lived till she was ninety four. Uh, Velma Thomas passed away. Yeah, unbelievable. Super easy to figure that out. Well, that's not her. That's not her. 
Well, she was 59 in 2008. <laughs> so unless she really aged when she came back to life, that ain't her. Things just move a little faster after an experience <laughs> like that, man. So, yeah. I, I mean, know. I found that person, but. Uh, All, right. All right. Woodbury, Tennessee. She's from here. Different, different, <laughs> different Velma, Velma. Thomas. There's a lot of Velmas out there. Yeah. A lot of them. There's a lot of Velmas. It's I didn't know that was an name. actual name. It's a good name to survive death. That's why I don't know this story. Uh, I mean, I knew weird. Velma from Scooby Doo, and yeah. I thought that was a made up name for the show. No. No. Scooby was. Uh, Is that what got you <laughs> headed that direction? Was because you said Scooby? <laughs> what? What do you mean? Because Scooby was a made up name, and then you said Velma. You go, there's another one. Pretty good. <laughs> No, it's just I've <laughs> never. There's Dale. Have you ever met a Velma before? Uh, Velma lives in Woodbury. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we can't even find out if she's still alive. <laughs> yeah, you don't know her. She's doing fine. Uh, I don't know if I ever met a Velma. Yeah, yeah. I never met a Shaggy either. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Shaggy's it sounds like a made up name. Yeah, yeah. So does that's why. So does Velma. So does Scooby. Because it's like well, Scooby's a dog. <laughs> The rest are people, yeah. so I don't, <laughs> don't ruin it for me. Shaggy, I haven't seen it yet. Shaggy, Shaggy is like Shaggy, Shaggy clothes. I was thinking Shaggy. I know Dan Shaggy, Dan yeah. Shaggy. but they're Shaggy clothes. Like Shaggy's like a. Term. He was like a hippie, Velma's right? Like a name, yeah. He's a what? Like a hippie? Yeah, he's just. Like I would think Velma's just like an old. I would think it's a you like know Myrtle. Yeah, Myrtle. See, yeah, mm-hmm. you know. I've never met a Myrtle either. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so how much exercise is good for you? Oh, jeez. All right. Here we go, Aaron. Why do moderate running runners have lower risk of death than people who don't exercise? But in a surprising turn, people who ran too much actually had a greater risk of death. Yeah. Ha ha. All right. Take that. Let's get some. Get some good stuff? I mean. <laughs> what? That's. I think we've been doing some We good have stuff. been, and you just went. Exercise. I was getting to Mr. Planet Fitness over here. I was, all, all I right. just read basic. <laughs> hey, everybody, if you run, it's good for you. <laughs> but if you did it too much, I guess it would be bad for you. I think most people would think the most extreme athletes would be the people best in shape. <sighs> they are the best in shape. They're like who? They're the, absolutely the best, but in not shape. the healthiest. I would bet they're the healthiest. For you to even get to that level, you have to you eat. Well, better, did you, you read do... hear what I just read? That if you do extreme, you have a greater risk of death because you're uh, climbing a rock. You're on the side of a cliff. <laughs> That's why. Like you're not. It's a, you know yeah. this is ultra marathon people. Yeah, you're putting yourself in heat exhaust. But those guys are in the their activity that they're doing can put them in a bad position. But they're healthier than a guy that runs. In better shape than a guy that goes, I run a mile a day. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, scientists believe weightlifters have reached their saturation point by how much we can lift. Like there's not going to be any more. Yeah. The record for heaviest deadlift, the guy lifted um, uh, 580 pounds from the floor to uh, over his head. He lifted over 1,000 up to his thigh. 580 pounds? Yeah. Over his head. God. That's so much. Oh, this guy looks weak, dude. <laughs> these I think, guys, I mean, these guys look insane. The world, world's strongest men. Yeah. They they just, they look like, the, you tell me, me and them are the same thing? No, you're healthier. <laughs> yeah. That guy's going to have a heart attack. I think, I think they have chins. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you guys know how many bones we have in our body? Two hundred six. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's what you're gonna say too, right? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I was gonna say I don't care, <laughs> but two hundred six. Two hundred six is a good one. Yeah, yeah. All right, don't. You're right. You don't care. Uh, but <laughs> we're born with three hundred. But then some of these bones fuse together. Where? Oh. Where are that? In the hands? Mm-hmm. More than half of your bones are located in your hands, wrists, feet, and ankles. That song. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Yeah. yeah. That's where I came from. <laughs> yeah. All right. 
Uh, so get some steam going. I do, the, saying, I do the human body episode with Andy. <laughs> Head, every episode, yeah. yeah. Uh, every second, your body produces approximately twenty-five million new cells. Where do the old ones go? Mm, that's a good question. I guess they're dust, also. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'd become dust. Well, the spleen filters them, cleans them. Yeah, we learned true. that earlier. That's yeah. true. About sixty percent of your body is made up of water. Okay, like the like Earth, like the lakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's a great office quote, by the way. What? Just there is a small part of me that's excited about these changes, but seventy percent of me <laughs> is water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do we wrap this up? Yeah. Um, like done, done. Yeah. Uh, like there's anywhere between sixty thousand to hundred thousand miles of blood vessels in the human body. Okay. 160,000 miles? Yeah. It'd be enough to travel around the world more than three times. Yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy. Have they tried to do that, you think? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I didn't Google it. Uh, they looked it up. Is there, was there, yeah, that was basically, right? <laughs> I mean, that's about as good as I'm going to get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it ran its course. Yep. You know, uh, this was like, I think this, this would be, if this episode is a human body, uh, it this guy you know he died at like 43 44 <laughs> and it was uh uh i don't think it was a surprise <laughs> like, <laughs> so people, I people didn't even ask how he died, yeah. <laughs> he died. there you go i've been waiting for this call <laughs> for quite a while uh-huh. <laughs> according to the your bio on the internet this is your birthday june 30th oh today's the day yeah right. so happy 43rd birthday thank you mm. yeah <laughs> uh june 30th yeah all right uh all right that's it uh let's go folks yeah. <laughs> i start doing that we'll figure that out don't worry about the polls yet <laughs> i'm where it's gonna be in a few weeks it's propaganda think about, about it yeah think, yeah <laughs> it's about to be think about it they just think about it that's all i'm asking all right see y'all next week